Hey, where will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing properly you are watching me in black and white. Because, as the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it, the description will have already informed you. This is the latest episode of my pick challenge and I'm delighted after having a couple of newbies collab with me I've got one of my old faithfuls back it's the gorgeous Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 so if you want to find out exactly which photo has inspired our looks today. Which palette or palettes are used and how well or otherwise they behaved. And most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Then my friend, you, you have the best seat in the house. Isn't that right, Nona? So as I've said, for some considerable time now, and oft hear echoed elsewhere in, shall we say, less imaginative places. But I bet they haven't got a sloth straw. Hmm? Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen from the intro, uh, which hopefully I remember to do in black and white. This is the latest in my series of photo inspiration. Um, I'm delighted that once again I'm collabing with my lovely Nona. Um, you all know I've, I've collabed with her so many times, but she's just a lovely woman, so why wouldn't I want to collab with her? Um, as usual, I've got a folder full of photos on my phone. We load over to her. She selected uh, this one. I'm waving at thin air right now because editing me has to put this in. As you can see, it's a beautiful tree lit from underneath at night. So, the main colours in the tree are yellow, orange, an orangey brown, like a, um, an umber shade or an amber shade. Um, and then the very, very dark night sky behind it. So, I have grabbed two palettes that I've not used on camera yet. My Suva Block Party because I want to give this blue a go. Um, and obviously it's got this lovely yellow as well. It has this orange if I want to use it. And if I want to lighten something up I've got a nice white there. And then I've got my Revolution Birds of Paradise for a Flawless palette, uh, which also has a yellow in it, but gives me some more options in terms of matte oranges to play with. Um, and if I decide I want to lighten the blue up slightly, I've got a couple of lighter shades there that I can mix in if I decide this is coming up too dark. Um, I haven't yet decided. I may yet bring in my Colourpop Super Shock Shadow in Bumblebee, which is this glorious orange. Um, yep, yeah, hasn't dried out yet. That's good. If your Super Shocks dry out, you can just use Duraline on them or the Revolution Mixing Medium. That works too. So, that's the plan for today. If you've never watched me before, uh, with my photo inspiration, 
it's a challenge basically you can only use colors that are in that picture so I can't add a pink or a purple or a green or a black or a cool toned brown I can only use the colors that are shown in the photo but I don't have to use all of them so if I wanted I could completely ignore the night sky and just do um, sort of fall shades, you know, sort of yellows and oranges and ambers and kind of... So it's entirely up to you, but that's literally it. Two rules. Only use colours in the picture, you can't add any in, but you don't have to use all of them. How simple can it be? And one of the reasons that I love this series so much, and the fact that we're now on, I think this is episode 44, I never expected it to get much beyond 10 episodes, to be quite honest. Um, it's something that hit me inspiration wise at stupid o'clock one morning with Painsomnia. Um, and thankfully not only do all of you seem to be enjoying it, but so do all of my lovely other makeup enthusiast colleagues on YouTube. Uh, because they are still keen to collab with me on it, which is always lovely. Because it means not only are they enjoying my company and my content but they're enjoying the whole theme of the collab as well which is brilliant so this remains a teaching channel <clears throat> so I, I zoom right in close to the eyes when I'm doing eye work so even if you're watching me on a phone you can see what's going on you're not distracted by what my hair is doing or my pretty background or the fact I might have a spot on my chin, you know, I have, it stays much longer, it's paying rent, <sighs> um, but I zoom right in close so you can see exactly what's going on and I don't speed the blending up unless I'm doing a cut crease otherwise the film will be way too long, um, but even with that I do one eye in real time and then just speed the other one up but for this one I'm not planning on doing a cut crease so all of the blending will be shown real time so you will know exactly how long it will take you to create this obviously it's not going to take you the entire length of the film because I'm blethering at you right now you haven't got a blether to yourself before you do it but if you take into account the whole length of the film, that will probably allow for you putting foundation, you know, obviously my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Um, I went in today with a combination of the e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist, which is a really good dupe for the Too Faced Hangover Spray. Except my sprayer goes off one-sided, which is weird. It's got a bit of a kink to it. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, and then I use the Revolution Super Fruit Extract Antioxidant Rich Serum and Primer. I just felt like my face needed a bit of extra help today. And obviously I use my Antiperspirant Primer. Because without this, makeup would not stay on my face. Um, I've got a film linked below where I give you more details on that specific primer. Right, enough blithering. Um, one of the issues that I have with deep set eyes is that for a long time I thought they were hooded because they have the same issues that people with hooded lids get in terms of how your eyeshadow wears through the day, transference, where it wears off etc. However they are two very different eye shapes which I discovered again during a Painsomnia moment when researching the different eye shapes to make sure that I was giving the best advice possible so that all of you regardless of your eye shape can follow my tutorials so I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment it'll be very up close and personal again and I will talk you through how to work out whether you have deep set or hooded lids you might have one of each um, I've got a friend who has that but it'll also tell you the workaround for each eye shape so that you get the best result from your eyeshadow. Okay? Right. Here's the clip, and when it's done, I'll be back to put some colour up here. 
Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and I am back. Hello. Am I a little bit close? No, I think I'm Yeah, right. I'm going to go in with one of my Do Colour brushes. It's quite a controlled blending brush. It's not as blown out as one of the normal size blending brushes that I would go for. No, I haven't been to a salon. These are stick-on ones. They've been on for two weeks actually, I'm really impressed and they are impressed nails so 
I guess they chose a good name for the company. These were ones that uh, Shari sent me. It was one of you lot, one of you 4F babies. Um, she very kindly sent me the Dominique Cosmetics Half Palette that was in her Boxy Charm box. And uh, she sent me these stick on nails as well. And that was pre the, the Lager Lurgy. So she must have known that I was going to need stick on nails. <laughs> right, so I'm going to start off by going into Dancing Shoes, which is that deep navy blue in the Suva Beauty Block Party palette. I'm just going to tap off because I don't want to go in too heavy. And I'm going to start off with what I call the Viennese Waltz of Blending. No, slow down. I haven't flipped over into a Strictly Come Dancing moment. The reason I call it the Viennese Waltz of Blending is because you do natural turns towards the nose, a bit of a fleckle when you get there, and then reverse turns to come back out. The reason I do that is I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. And if I were to just do windscreen wiper, like these 20 year old and 30 year old beauty gurus that are stuffed full of Botox, allegedly, <clears throat> I would have white tiger stripes. I'd be looking so tiger stripey, Joe Exotic would be putting me in a cage. Mm. Controversial. Right. But by doing this, what we're doing is we're very gently moving the skin on the eyelid so that it covers all of the area without giving us the white stripey bit. I'm really not too bothered about the fact it's gone onto the lid there. But I'm just going through what for me is my natural crease. I'm going to go just over the halfway mark, I think. I don't want to take it right into the corner because it is quite dark and the other colours I'm using are going to be that bit lighter. Now the reason I didn't mind going onto the lid is because I'm now going to go onto the lid. Just onto the outer edge here. Give a bit of definition on the outer corner. Blues are a very difficult colour to create. Blues, greens, purples and yellows are some of the most difficult colours to create, particularly deeper shades. Because um, obviously the deeper the shade, the more pigment you have, more pigment molecules you have. Um, so darker shades can be more difficult to blend out, but this is this is blending really nicely as you can see. Just blending that onto the outer corner there. That's nice. Now I'm going to do the same thing this side. Now I always sit back when I'm doing this and double check that the shapes that I'm doing both sides look the same. Because although I could be doing the same shape on the lid, um, they could still look different because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're Jimmy Chuck and you photoshop your bloody finished look. I don't do that. I don't use any skin smoothing, photoshop, edge blending. I don't do any of that nonsense. The most I'll do is if it's a bit overcast when I'm taking the photos and it's not showing the true shades, I'll tweak the brightness or the contrast but I don't use any other kind of manipulation unless it's a bloody obvious snapchat filter where I've got horns or you know elliptical pupils or something um, but if I do put those up the first few pictures will always be the non sort of snapchat filter ones so I'm just sitting back and checking that I've got the same sort of shape. See, I've gone a little bit more rounded this side than this side. So I just need to bring this side up a little bit more. I 
I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on the lid as possible. That's better. I'm just going to deepen this side up a little bit. So, my lovely Nona, I mean, if you've watched me for any length of time, you will have heard of Nona. She and I have collabed together a number of times, individually, in big groups, in smaller collabs. Um, we have a regular collab going on the first Saturday of every month with Laura from Gold Star Work down in New Zealand where we do three continents, one palette, where we all use one of the Colourpop palettes to create a look. Um, obviously, she, I and Anya are part of the Bitches of Eastwick, because we all got shut up on by the same bitch on uh, YouTube, who everybody else seems to think is God's bloody gift. But, uh, They'll get their comeuppance. Give them enough for open, they'll hang themselves. Just need to be patient. No Torian, so I'm very patient. Um, but yeah, and, and she and I have been in larger group collabs together. Um, I just love Nona. She's, she's one of the kindest most genuine people on the platform. She will always find something nice to say about your look. Even if you put it up and you've gone, I really hate this, but I'm putting it up to show, you know, that in a year's time when I come back and look at it, I can see how much improvement I've made. She will always find something to compliment you on. Um, she's an absolute genuine gem of a woman. Um, and I feel privileged to call her my friend. Um, I'm just cleaning the brush off on a microfiber cloth. I used to use a colour switch, but they're way too harsh, especially on natural head brushes. I mean, this is synthetic, but yeah, way too harsh. Right, I'm going to go into Lemonade, which is the yellow. A bit, quite a bit more kick up on this particular one. I'm going to start this on the inner corner here, I think. There's my fleckle. A reverse turn to bring it back towards. I'm not worried about fallout. Um, I do my foundation afterwards for precisely that reason. I never used to. But then I realised that by putting um, powder under your eye to catch the fallout, you're effectively baking. And I'm sorry, once you're the right side of 40, the only baking you want to do is in the kitchen. Coincidentally, I'm doing my makeup in the kitchen, but that's not the point. This yellow is lovely, isn't it? It's just so beautifully bright. I had a feeling of all the um, pictures that I sent over that Nona would choose this one because um, it's the most neutral shade of all of them. Um, and Nona started off as our neutral queen. She was very much into her neutral shade and, and was a bit intimidated at first by colour but since she's been collabing with more people and particularly with myself and Anya because we both love colour we've been encouraging her to kind of step outside of her comfort zone and now she produces some of the most amazing looks in colour um, but every so often when I'm sending photos across for a photo inspiration I'll normally send things that I know that are in your comfort zone and things that are slightly outside your comfort zone 
So if you feel like pushing yourself, you can. And if you're not feeling too adventurous, you can just choose something, you know. Plus, what, what usually happens is that I'll send you a load of pictures over the first time. And then for following episodes, we take it in turns. So, you know, next time round, it'll be Nona's turn to choose the picture. It's just the way it goes. I'm just going to clean the brush off again using the same brush for all of this because I like the fact that I've got more control. You would have noticed that I came right up to here when I was here. That's because I wanted to have control and do the tiniest circles possible to try and leave a little minuscule one millimetre gap between the colour and my brows. Obviously if you've got less eyelid space if necessary, take your colour right up to your brow. It's really not a problem to do that. Right, going into the Bird of Paradise palette now. And I think I'm going to go into... Do I want two can play? Or do I want a cardinal? This is two can play. This is cardinal. What if I... Do a combination of both. Yeah, I'm going to do a combination of both, I think. Just to make my life that little bit more difficult. And I'm going to use this. Initially, I'm going to blend it quite deeply into that blue. on the edge there to make sure we get a really, really seamless blend as John McLean would say. But as you can see I've been drawn very much to the brightness of the tree, the yellow, the orange, um, contrasting with the dark night behind it and now I'm not talking Batman, even though I have got a Batman ring on. Can you see that? Probably not. It's the one. Yeah, there we go. Look, that memory. It's a Prezi from Hubby. Don't know whether he's telling me I'm his superhero or whether he just wants me to get a skin tight black outfit. <laughs> I waffle. You probably realise that by now new here. Hi, I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire and I blether a lot. But apparently I've got quite a relaxing voice so people don't mind listening to me blether. This is blending out really nicely actually, I'm quite surprised for... because Revolution don't always do bright colours well, they can be hit and miss, although to be fair, the majority of the ones that I've tried to, in this tin format, the, um, what are they called, Forever Flawless ones, um, to be fair, those have been not bad. Uh, same thing this side, start off with blending on the blue. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day? You watch me while you're eating your breakfast. If you are, what you got? What you got for brekkie? Cornflakes? Waffles? Pancakes? Bacon? Eggs? I had a bagel. Toasted bagel. With a slice of cheese in it. I'm very much a carb girl. I know I probably should cut down on them. Probably help me shift the weight a bit quicker, but I tried the Atkins diet in the 90s when you know they they really like no carb at all. Yeah, by lunchtime on the second day, I would have ripped someone's arm off for some French stick. You know, I just I'm. Let's just say I'm a girl that likes my carbs. 
oh. my carbs are like my butt. But then seeing as how fat bottom girls make the rocking world go round, I figure I'm playing my part in that. Right, you can see what I mean now about your eyes not being symmetrical because I've got much less orange here than I have this side and yet when you sit back and look at them they look the same. This is what I mean about always sitting back and checking your look before you've finished doing your blending basically. So I'm going to pause you now my darlings while I go and pop some foundation on etc and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you but for you pop it it's going to be absolutely instant. Guess who realised halfway through doing their brows they hadn't actually finished the top eye look off yet? Yeah, that'll be me. Right, I'm going to grab one of these Jeffrey Voldemort lip brushes, which is the JS24. And I'm going to use my Revolution Cucumber Fixing Spray after I've picked the pigment up on the brush. I'm going to go into Nachos from the Super Block Party. I'm going to pray that spraying it means I'm not going to get fallout down my new base that I've just done. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, you will kill it. If you've gone into a pressed pigment with a wet brush and you've killed it, check out my mini tutorial on hard pan and how to get rid of it. Right, uh, I need to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin. Otherwise, moisture will get down here and you won't have a brush. You will have a stick. Right, the reason I like using a lip brush for this is you can get right tight into that corner. See? I'm just going to pull this onto the two thirds of the lid that so far haven't had any pigment on it. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles to gently blend where those two colours meet to soften the edge off. Right, dry the brush, pick up pigment again for the other eye. Now, with this eye I've got this super deep creasing just here um, this is the eye that I'm blind in. It's the one that was pulled around when I was a kid and I'm talking like five years old at the ophthalmic hospital so we're talking 41 years ago and you know I'm playing for the damage now kind of thing. Now with this one I do have to stretch my lid out because if I don't what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in that deep creasing while it's wet rather than being blended on and then throughout the day as it dries it ends up getting into my eye and down my face. So, the only safe way to do this without causing more damage. Measure the amount of damage, i.e. deep creasing, it's about a nail's width. Allow another nail's width, then put your finger on and gently stretch the lid out just far enough stretch the creasing out so I'm not pulling it out to my lug hole or my ear hole because I'm not familiar with the vernacular and the minute I'm happy with the coverage I'm letting go and then just doing the rest of the lid in the same way that I did this side So that's the only safe way to do it without causing your eye more damage. But don't do that unless you already have the same issue as me. Otherwise you will give yourself the same issue as me 
and you will curse yourself for years or later. Right, it's better. Let's finish this eye look off now then, shall we? Now I've done the top lid. Honestly, fibro fog is real today, folks. Right, flat top brush. I'm going to dip into dancing shoes, which is the navy. In the navy, you can highlight your lash line in the navy. But not my waterline. Um, I've always had very, very watery eyes. Uh, made worse by the fact one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever, if I put anything on my waterline or my tight line, I end up with Niagara Falls and I'm lucky if I can film the outro, the intro and get a couple of photos before the makeup look is wrecked, literally. And I'm using that in the literal, not the figurative sense. Noise the heck out of me when I hear people go, I literally died. Well, no, you literally didn't because you're talking to me. Unless I've suddenly turned into the ghost whisperer. <laughs> Sorry, that went rather deep then, didn't it? Let's go back to my makeup, Ange. Right, you need a smudger brush or a dense blender brush now. I like this one. This is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat top like the last one, but chunky. And I'm going to dip into lemonade, which is that yellow, because I just think it's beautiful. And I'm going to use that to very gently buff the lower lash line to soften it up, blend it out a bit, give it a bit of smokiness tie the top and bottom look together. Can't wait to see what Nona's done because she loves, her favourite colour is purple but her favourite colour to use on her eyes is orange so I'm guessing she's going to have a very warm brown and orange look. I don't know if she's going to pull the yellow as well and the blue like I have. It'll be interesting to see. That's one of the things that I love about this series. You've got the same picture, the same colours available to each person and yet there's only been I think two occasions when we've both produced similar eye looks. In the majority of cases the eye looks that are produced are very very different indeed which is awesome because it just shows you how different people can be inspired by different things in the same picture or palette or inspiration because it's something that used to bug me when I'd be, I'd be watching something like I don't know, Tarty maybe doing a makeup look and I think now see I wouldn't have gone for those colours if I was her why did she choose those colours and it early days before I learned how to experiment properly with makeup I thought that meant that I was the one doing it wrong no there is no wrong in makeup you do what makes you happy Right, I'm going to my Fenty highlight today. Lightning Dust and a Fire Crystal. And pop some of that under my brow. I did my usual with my brows. Um, I used the soap kit from Revolution. I like that because the, uh, the brush in it is like a little mini toothbrush used the soap dry, didn't wet it, brushed through my brows and then while they were still kind of sticky 
applied the powder from basically I used this purple uh, this navy and used that to go through the brow in the same way you would use an ordinary brow powder but the difference being this way you get a coloured brow to match your look and the powder that you're applying sticks to the sticky soap and then sets the sticky soap so it has something to grab onto and it stays put awesome all right my lovelies as you can see I did inner corner, brought it underneath and blended it in with the colours that I'd done underneath my eye as well. So, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this highlight all over my face. Well, the high points anyway. Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look. Hey, I am back. Right. Okay, use the same Fenty highlight on um, my cheekbones. Use the Essence Lash Princess Volume, the orange one. The mascara today, and the lippy is the Wayne Goss Bullet Lipstick in uh, Amaryllis, I think. Yeah, Amaryllis. So, this, my darlings is my final look inspired by this picture what do you think how do i do you like you not like if you were collabing with me today instead of nona which colors would you have been drawn to which colors would you have used which palettes would you have pulled out would you have pulled the same ones as me or different ones let me know. I'd be really interested to find out. That's what the comments box is for. Feel free to leave me a comment. <laughs> right, if you're one of my regular babies, just checking for lipstick on the teeth. If you're one of my regular babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, uh, but they are leaving me in your news feed, so it's not obvious that you have been unsubbed. Uh, once you have done that and you've checked your notification status and given me a like and left me a comment and maybe even a cheeky little share to help with the algorithm, you know what I'm going to need you to do. I'm going to need you to go over to my beautiful Nona and check out her look and see just exactly what she was inspired to do with this picture. I know she's going to knock it out of the park. Because this is this is her ball ground. This is this is me going out of my comfort zone to do a more neutral look. Yes, folks, for me this is neutral. As always, don't forget to leave Nona a lovely comment. Let her know you're from 4F. Just show her the same love you always show me. And if you're not already subscribed to her. Why not? I don't understand. It's so easy. Hmm? Yeah, you'll thank me later. It's fine. If you are new here, either from Nona's channel or you fell over this film by complete chance, hi, hello, welcome, lovely to see you. Uh, you must have liked something about this film if you made it this far, even if it's just my blethering. So uh, it would be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. So, super easy to do that. You hit the red subscribe button, you turn it grey. You ring the bell, you say yes, and all of them repeatedly until YouTube stop asking you. And then hopefully they'll send you notifications for, I don't know, one in four of my films that I upload. Speaking of my films that I upload, there are an awful lot to look for. I mean, for example, there's 43 preceding episodes of this pick challenge where I collab with various people, including Nona. Well, a few times. If this hasn't struck 
your light, although I'm not quite sure why if you've made it this far through. There are plenty of other films you can choose in my channel. I've got palette reviews, I've got tutorials, I've got challenges, I've got tag films. I even read you my favourite poem. So, as I have said for some considerable time now, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, just indulge baby. That's what lockdown's for, huh? Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.